All right, guys, these are the items that you're going to need. And throughout the video, I'll talk about which ones they are and where I got them. So let's start this video off. The first thing you do is you need the shells. I bought two molds of six and I cut them each into individuals and then I cut them even more. So there's just a small lip around the edge and that way they fit perfectly into a cupcake pan. This is a double boiler that I got on Amazon wasn't really expensive I think it was like seven bucks with the spatula I put the uh, chocolate melt I use the Giardelli's that I buy the dark chocolate chocolate melts um, I buy these at Sam's Club it's like 30 ounces for about eight dollars um, you get over a dozen for each bag for sure put them in there mix them up um, make sure it's on high boiling Keep mixing and mixing until they're completely melted. It could take a little while depending on your heat, um, but don't stop until they're completely smooth. Once they're smooth, then you turn the stove down to low just to keep them soft and melted throughout the whole process. Okay, now once they're nice and smooth, turn down the heat. Like I said, keep it on low. It'll just keep the chocolate nice and soft and wet. I trade over to a teaspoon size spoon. It takes about one teaspoon and a half or so to be able to coat it and have excess for the second round. Again, you want to make sure you have enough for two rounds, and you'll see why in a little bit. Lean the cup over and get that chocolate right to the edge. You'll notice that it will bubble right over that edge, but it usually keeps pretty well inside of it and just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. If at first you have a hard time doing this, no problem. You get a spoon and use a spoon to get it right up to the edge. Use the bottom side of the spoon and get it right up to the edge. But if you, you get used to rolling it, it makes it really easy and it gets it right up to the edge. We're going to go ahead and go through each one. Just roll it all the way through. Make sure that you leave the excess chocolate inside the cup. Do not put it back into the boiler yet. We're going to do that on the second round. We need that excess chocolate. So you just keep it like that right down in the bottom. If you get to a point anywhere that you feel you're running out of chocolate, and I purposely left less on purpose so I could show you this, no worries. Add more of the melt right into the double boiler. Keep melting it. Just go scooping through it again real quick and continue your process. You could always add chocolate. It's easier to add some and melt some than put too much and then waste it in the end. Once it's melted again, continue your process and go all the way till you have all 12 cups filled. As you're rolling the chocolate inside, it'll stay pretty much to the edge. 
If you ever get to the point where it spills over, it's not a big deal. Just get something with a flat, flat edge, butter knife, spatula, baking spatula, whatever. Scrape it right back and put it in the bowl. And that's it. Continue forward. All right, guys, now we have all of 12 of them filled. We're just going to let them sit, give them about 5 to 10 minutes with the excess in it, and then we're going to come back. Once we come back, you're going to see that there's still the excess in the bottom. The sides, the bulk of it stays on the on the uh, mold, and that's the whole purpose of going back a second time, Let's to thicken up the wall a little bit so that the shell is a little bit harder and not as thin and easy to flake or melt in your hands. So you go back and squeeze a little bit, make the excess come to the sides and roll through, go all the way around and once you're done, you get that extra and you just dump it right back into the uh, double boiler. I usually roll it around so you're not making a mess everywhere. Get your flat knife or side and just scoop the side. Anytime you make an error that you go off the side, it's not a big deal, we just scoop it and just pick it up. And in the second round, this is gonna happen more often, of course. Every time that you drip out the excess, we're gonna go through this. So again, just lean it over, get the excess. Sometimes you might see a little film on top of it if it sit a little too long, but you don't want it to sit too long and just roll along the sides and set up a second coat. All right, guys, if you ever get to the point on the second round that there's not enough, easily just go back to the double boiler, stick in a little bit extra, even though it's hotter than the original, and just continue the process, continue swiping, continue cleaning the edges go all the way through until you get to the last one. Um, so just do this all the way to the 12th one, and then uh, if you don't want to watch this, fast forward, and I'll get to the process once they are, are hard. All right, guys, we finished the last one. Now we take the whole entire pan 
and put it in the fridge, set a timer for anywhere between five to 10 minutes. I usually take about seven minutes for mine. Once you pull them out, they're going to be nice and set. You're going to see there's a difference. You'll see mine have sometimes a little shine. Sometimes if they get steam from the double boiler, you'll get that crackling in the middle. It's not a big deal. But once they're hard, you take them out, get the lip and softly press down and you'll hear a little snap every time. Let it snap all the way around before you try to take it out. It makes it a lot easier and smoother to get the shell out. Once you snap all the way around, push one side more. With your finger on the inside of the shell, you just push it and you'll see it comes right out. Beautiful, nice, and smooth. You're going to want to just put it in a cupcake cup. Makes it easy. Keeps it nice and clean from touching other stuff. And then just repeat the same process for each one. Snap all the way around. Once you're done, push inside with one finger, push the outside with the other, and you get a nice shiny coat. Okay, once they're all done, I like to put out two plates just to have something to sit them on. You can use the cupcake holders or plates. I mix the cocoa beforehand. I use the Giardelli's Majestic Cocoa Powder. It takes one teaspoon of the Majestic Cocoa Powder or any cocoa powder really to every one tablespoon of sugar. If you make a big batch, I use one third of a cup of the cocoa to one cup of the sugar. Make sure you have a flat pan. It could be a griddle, it could be a small pan, as long as it's flat, put it on very low heat. Sometimes I even smooth it and put it off of the heat just to get it warm. And I use the dehydrated uh, marshmallows I got on Amazon. They have them just white, they have them like in the cereal. Some people use the bigger ones, you know, the, the Stay Puff ones, a little bit bigger, the Jet ones, or the big, big ones. I put my two chocolates on the plates. Now you gotta make sure that you need to heat them both. Get the first one very quickly, roll it along, pull it off, put it down, put the cocoa powder in there. I use one tablespoon of the mix of cocoa powder chocolate mix. And then I put the marshmallows. That's a preference. You could put as much or as little or none. It's up to you. You could put, like I said, the bigger mini marshmallows or even the large ones in there. Get the second half. Same thing. Roll it a little bit. Get it soft. And then pull it off and join the edges. This is a little bit difficult. Take some practice. Join it. Just hold it there for a minute. And then with your finger or with a spoon, just get the excess and just flatten it out and that will help seal the chocolates together. Go all the way around and you're done. Now, if you need extra chocolate, if something did not seal right, I always leave the double broiler full on the side to use it. If you're decorating, don't worry about your fingerprints on it. Um, if you're not going to decorate, you might want to change and put some gloves on in this process. That way you don't have the fingerprints on it. But since I usually decorate them, then no big deal. Move along to the next one. All right, let's do this one more time. Don't forget, you have to melt the first one. If you do not, it will not seal right. The edge will be too thin and it will not seal. One tablespoon right into that and your marshmallows. There's a million recipes. You could put peppermint, you can make this with white chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate. This is just a sample. Melt the other half. Again, put it right on top, edge to edge. Since they both have a little bit of a thick seal, you'll see that chocolate right there. Hold them together. Be careful they don't slip and then just slide. Sometimes they'll slide over a little bit, no big deal, just get that chocolate and smooth it on there. And again, if you need extra chocolate to smooth the edge, get some from the double boiler. 
or if not, if you don't have the double boiler going, then no big deal. You could get some chocolate from the pan that you melt the edges from, but I just get it from the double boiler. All right, guys, they're done. I have put them in their cupcake liners. If you want to have them keep, just put them in a Tupperware. It has to be an airtight container. I'm going to take one out to show you a demo. Um, I'm going to get the a uh, cling wrap, and I just use it for extra sealing. Sometimes, you know, the Tupperware doesn't seal as well, or it's just, you know, you just want it as tight as possible. They will stay in a Tupperware container in a cool room, um, avoid direct light, especially sunlight, and they will keep for as long as the expiration of the chocolate or any of the ingredients are, they will keep that way. Um, I just line it with the cling wrap, put the lid, and I put it in the pantry. I got my mug out, um, and when this is the way you do it, you put your mug, you get your bomb, you drop it into your mug. Um, Sometimes they'll have decorations, they'll have little things on top. You'll see it floating in your meal, in your mug, or else it'll add flavor. I get one cup of milk. If you don't want it that strong, go up to a cup and a quarter of hot milk. I've already put it in the microwave for about two minutes, two and a half minutes. And you'll see it start melting right through the chocolate and boom, everything in there is just going to pop right out at you. Of course, the bigger the marshmallows, the more effect, but there it is. Grab a teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever you got, mix it up because the uh, chocolate will still be sometimes a little clumped up in there and you'll see it come up there. It'll be clumped up and that way you mix it up and melt it completely. But there it is, that's the cocoa bomb. That's just a regular chocolate cocoa bomb with dehydrated marshmallows using the Ghirardelli melts and Ghirardelli cocoa, my favorite chocolate so far. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you guys later.